Vanessa. I'm Jacob. And this is our eight month old son, Ochre. And um, we've decided that we are going to do a vlog um, because we've had a lot of people in the past ask us, you know, what we do for a living or how do we go about, you know, raising animals or. I don't know, there's just a bunch of different questions. A lot of our, our projects, like our. Yes climbing wall or our, yeah like I said our animals or like many of the DIY stuff we do around the house. So we thought why not take some time because we've got a little bit of extra spare time for now to show you guys what we do so we'd like to do some episodes and um, they're not going to be every week but they're just going to be when we have time and um, but first off we'll start by introducing ourselves, showing you guys around the house, showing you outside, and introducing you to our animals. And we'll give you a little bit of a recap of what we've been up to since our last YouTube video, which we posted three years ago when we were on the Free to Wander bus and we were traveling across Canada. As heard from us was in 2017 on the bus. Um, we've got up to a lot of stuff in the last three years. Um, so Notable mentions are. Oh, we got. We got. A, a no, 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 you're skipping. You're skipping right to the head. Okay, so we. we got in 2017, uh, our last video was filmed in Canmore, Alberta. Um, we are presently located in Wakefield, Quebec. And so we got married. We got home. We moved into a farmhouse. We renovated a farmhouse. We got chickens. And that was our first time. Hello. That was, that was our, our first, first foray into animals. Yes, into animals other than our cats. Then we adopted a dog named Zola, an Australian Shepherd, and that was our first puppy. Um, and then we got married the next summer in 2018 on the farm, and we did the whole wedding ourselves from uh, growing all the plants ourselves, um, making like all the backdrops and I did like a macrame backdrop drop on our altar and um, Jacob built like so many things you can't even name them um, and we did all the landscaping and I made like the bow ties and stuff for all the groomsmen so it was a very handmade country wedding um, and then Unfortunately, in November 2018, um, our dog Zola passed away. So that was a super pivotal moment in our lives where we decided that we needed to move on and take the next step. So after Zola passed away, it was a super hard thing for both Jacob and I to go through. She was our baby. She was the first thing that we've ever lost and unfortunately it was tra we're, quite traumatic. We're lucky in a sense that that's like our first big traumatic thing um, and it, it, it like we get get that all the time like I mean people don't say it to us but like at the end of the day it was just a dog you know like our family is all healthy but we were just so attached and it was our first baby so it was a really really hard time for us. Yes. And so my sister uh, surprised us, yeah, surprised us with a great Pyrenees who, puppy, who we named Spirit. You'll meet her later. Um, so Spirit we adopted at the end of November. We bought a house. Um, we bought a beautiful house that's a little funky for sure, but I think that adds to its charm on six acres a little further away from the city than we were before um, somewhere in there too we had goats yeah i don't know when the goats came and left and we also upgraded had upgraded to a hundred chickens yeah we had a hundred chickens <laughs> for a while. and we were selling our which i or, don't recommend <laughs> we were selling our organic eggs to one of the organic vegetable farms here in the community Two then, seconds after we moved in, we got another puppy. And she's actually related to Zola. They have the same mom, so that was so special for us. And we were actually... <laughs> we were actually able to see her be born, which was so special. And we were right there and helped with her as much as we could for the first two months of her life. And then we adopted her in February of 2019. 
um, and her name is Urfa, and you'll meet her again as well. And then I got pregnant with Ochre. So, <laughs> so uh, it's been a lot, and then he was born at the end of November in 2019. Um, then we got pigs, and then we got some more chickens, and it's just been a whole, um, I don't know, juggling situation of animals, and we keep expanding, and we've been doing renovations, um, and then we also adopted another dog. <laughs> Very About a month ago, we adopted another Australian Shepherd named Moose. You're going to meet him again. You'll meet the four cats, you'll meet the seven pigs, you'll meet the 33 chickens. Um, and yeah. <laughs> was born February 21st, 2019 and she is pregnant with puppies right now. She's got Border Collie puppies in her tummy and this is Zola's sister. So she's purebred Australian Shepherd and she's a very good girl. She listens really, really well. This is spirit. She's beautiful, great Pyrenees, pregnant girl. She uh, she has a tendency to wander. She always comes back within like 20 minutes to an hour. But right now with both the girls being pregnant and porcupines around and stuff, we're just not taking any chances. Um, but we're starting to experiment with like having her out more so she goes and comes back and then stays. We don't really know what's going on with it. But, but this is her. She's beautiful. She's like almost two years old. And we love her a lot. Right, Spiri? She's our favorite. Don't tell anybody. Though. adopted about a month ago and um, he's once again purebred Australian Shepherd. He's actually born a day after Eartha so he was born February 22nd and he is pretty good. He's having, having had a, a little bit of problems with uh, separation anxiety but he goes to work with Jacob all the time and he blended in with the family super well. He's really good with the chickens and the pigs and he gets along really well with the cats and the baby and the other dogs. So we're happy to have him a part of the family for sure. Mm -hmm. garden and um, last year with the pregnancy I just didn't have the motivation to do this so this spring we got busy right away and um, Jacob cut down a bunch of the trees that were here we um, laid mulch and Jacob built all of the cedar beds he did all of the fencing here and the door and everything to keep the dogs and the cats out and then we started planting so we got soil and some manure from our cousin who has a cattle farm and he gives us nice nice stinky manure each year which we're super thankful for um this bed here it's got basil and sage oregano thyme and 
That's it. There's no rosemary. I thought there was rosemary. Here we've got carrots, onions, chives, a lot of kale, beets, and then this one at the beginning of the year was all filled with lettuce, and then now I've just reseeded it with some more uh, herbs and onions. We've got our crazy tomato plants that are kind of, I don't know, just being a little bit crazy. <laughs> and then we've got spinach and arugula and lettuce growing for the second round. So I'm just harvesting some excess kale. There's quite a bit here for the chickens. What's nice is that if we have too much and we aren't able to give it to friends and family and we aren't able to use it for ourselves, we've got compost loving animals on the farm that will eat these up. No problem. Escaping chickens. They should come back now. Did they come back now? So these are chickens. I'm gonna get attacked by a bee. And we've got about 20 chickens in here. This bumblebee's harassing the look at that. So these are our chickens. Um, we've got about 20 in here. All of these roosters are from the uh, eggs that we hatched. Um, and unfortunately, there's no way to determine if you're gonna get a boy or a girl. It's gonna be 50-50. And we got five boys and two girls out of the seven eggs that we did. Um, but they're great. These gold girls, they're hybrids, so they give us an egg a day. And we keep, we keep them all winter long. And, and yeah, I think that's all that I'm gonna say about these chickens. And we'll go in and just take a peek at the girls who are on their eggs. Did, did all the chickens come in? take a peek at the three silky hens and they're what is called broody so this here this is fur she's a silky that's ash and then Ashley is hiding under there and they're all on eggs right now Should I introduce them here? Yeah. So these are seven pigs. Um, we got them in early, early summer, late spring, as just little piglets. One of them was actually quite a bit bigger. They're all pretty close to the same size now. Um, last time we did pigs, we named them all after... Um, herbs. Herbs. Herbs, yeah. This year we decided not to, just based on having to eat them later. We just figured it'd be better to keep them more anonymous. <laughs> it's hard. It's hard. You never know if you should name them and treat them as pets when you know you have to eat them.
are our chicks. <laughs> um, so we got chicks at the end of May and they were a week old when we got them and I'm really wanting a fancy flock so I want a bunch of different varieties of chickens so we kind of we drove really far for these we drove over an hour to two different locations and we picked up some Americanas uh, wine dotes bard rocks ba a bard rock one bard rock three Easter eggers and some Orpingtons so they were really, really cute and small. They're kind of awkward and teenager right now. Um, but you can take a look at them here. So these are some of them. And what's really cool about this little, oh, I'm falling. This little area, they're not in here permanently. In a few weeks, we'll transition them over to what we call Coop One. Um, but this box, was where they stayed underneath heat lamps and they were fed and watered and everything. And then Jacob built this second box that sits on top of it where they have perches and it's good to introduce perches to them once they're a little bit older because that's how they sleep at nighttime. And then this is the third piece. So it's kind of like a puzzle piece. And then this just allows them to get fresh air and to start foraging and, you know, digging in the dirt and everything, and we move it around to give them fresh, fresh grass every other day or so. Um, which, by the way, we have to do. <laughs> um, and then you can peek inside here. And then you've got some more girls and boys. They're getting quite big. It's getting quite tight in there. So we'll be moving them, like I said, in a couple of weeks. Once they're big enough to defend themselves against the other chickens, it's kind of a fragile time because they're getting a little too big in here, but they're still too small for over there. But a couple more weeks and they'll be free birds.